All right, let's do one more example where we might see quadratics when we're solving word problems. I know, I'm sorry, everybody's favorite. It says here in example number four, falling distance. So if we have an object falling, we have acceleration due to gravity, and we can always end up using the formula 4.9 t squared plus v sub zero t equals s, where t is really the time in seconds, s is distance in meters, and v sub zero is your initial velocity. So you have some sort of an object, you might just drop it, which means your initial velocity is zero. You're not throwing it or anything like that. Or you might throw it down and then you have a certain initial velocity. You can figure out how far it's falling if you know how long it's been falling, t. Or you might be able to find how long it's been falling, t, if you know the distance, s. All of those different things are variables in a quadratic equation. Let's look at a few examples. It says here a, a life preserver is dropped from a helicopter at an altitude of 75 meters. Approximately how long does it take the life preserver to reach the water? So we have this formula. And we have to know some variables, right? We need t, we need v sub zero, and we need s, or at least we need two out of those three so we can solve for the missing one. Well, we do know in the problem that it was dropped from the life preserver, from the life preserver, the, the life preserver was dropped from the helicopter, which actually means our initial velocity is just zero. We didn't throw it or anything like that, so my initial velocity of this object is just zero. It's just dropped from the helicopter. And because the helicopter was up above the water, 75 meters, well, that means my distance, s, is 75. So I should be able to plug in a zero for my velocity and a an, uh, 75 for my s, my distance. Zero times t is just zero, right? And so then I end up with a quadratic equation that says 4.9 t squared equals 75. Well, I should be able to use our uh, techniques of solving quadratics, either square rooting or factoring or completing the square or quadratic formula in order to be able to solve and find t, how long it takes to reach the water. All right, let's go ahead and divide both sides because this just has a t squared and not a t squared and a t like a uh, trinomial. Uh, we can just try to isolate that t by dividing both sides by 4.9. And then we can square root both sides to get rid of the square, like we've done in the past using our um, properties of uh, square roots or our principle of square roots property. So I can go ahead and take the square root of 75 divided by 4.9, using my calculator, of course. Technically, I would get t equals plus or minus 3.91. But t, remember, was time in seconds. And it doesn't really make sense to have a negative time. So I'm only going to use the positive version. I'm going to say it took about 3.91 seconds for this life preserver to hit the water. All right, let's look at another one. It says here a coin is tossed downward with an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. So our initial velocity, our v sub zero, is a little bit different this time. Because it was thrown downward, it had an initial velocity. In this case, our initial velocity was 30 meters per second from an altitude of 75 meters. Approximately, how long does it take the coin to reach the ground? So we can use that same formula, the 4.9 t squared plus v sub zero times t equals s. Well, remember, our initial velocity this time was 30, so I can plug that in for my initial velocity. And my distance, or my altitude, is 75. After doing that, I noticed that I had a t squared and a t. So I couldn't just isolate the t squared and square root like we did in the last problem. Now I have to actually move everything to the same side and use one of the three ways of factoring a standard form quadratic equation, factor, complete the square, or quadratic formula. When I subtracted 75 to both sides, I got this, and I realized that it's probably going to be hard to figure out what factors uh, multiply to a 4.9, right? And completing the square is probably going to be hard if I'm going to have to divide by 2 and square and work with fractions and decimals. So the technique I'm going to use is quadratic formula for this one. I can pick out my a, my b, and my c. a is 4.9, b is 30, and my c is negative 74. 75. <laughs> now let's plug in the a, the b, and the c into the quadratic formula and simplify. All right, I have my negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared 
minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So I've plugged in all my values, and now I just have to use my calculator to simplify. I'm going to use the correct order of operations. I'm going to square the 31st. I got 900. I'm going to multiply 4 times 4.9 times 75. Those two negatives make a positive 1,470. And then 4.9 times 2 is my 9.8 in my denominator. I've got 900 plus 1,470 underneath that radical, which is a total of 2,370. And then I can just use my calculator. I can do negative 30 plus the square root of 2,370 divided by 9.8. And then I can do the negative 30 minus the square root of 2,370 divided by 9.8. I end up getting two answers. I ended up getting negative 8.03 and 1.91. But remember, t was seconds, so it doesn't really make much sense to have a negative time. And so I'm going to say it takes about 1.91 seconds for that coin to reach the ground. All right, last one here. It says here approximately how far will an object fall in two seconds if thrown downward with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second from a helicopter. All right, so this one gives us a little bit different information. This time, we know the time. We know what t equals. It equals two seconds. We know the initial velocity is 20 meters per second. We threw this object uh, from the helicopter with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. Let's go ahead and plug that in for our v sub 0. And let's go ahead and plug in uh, 2 for our t, our time. And then let's solve for x and figure out the distance this time. When I did that, s was already by itself isolated on that right side. So all I have to do is use the order of operations. I can square, multiply, add and subtract, and simplify that left side. I ended up getting 59.6. Remember that s was distance in meters. So it says here, how far will this object fall after two seconds? And we can say approximately 59.6 meters making sure that we use that formula that they gave us at the beginning, making sure we understand what all of those different variables mean, and that we can solve all different types of quadratic equations.